I'll start by saying that I was very much in favor of LRT, uh, as our last speaker was, our last delegate was. Um, I think it's a great idea. I like, I like rail transportation myself. You don't have to lurching side to side. And, great. Um, but and that's a big reason why there's so much angst mm -hmm. around this project. We're not getting the answers that we're mm -hmm. looking for. We're trying to protect you folks. You know, my relatives came here in the early 1800s. They've helped build this city. They were all in the union. Mm -hmm. My husband's still in the union. They're a huge part of our city. And so, yes, as much as we're committed to stand up for you and to stand beside you and mm -hmm. to fight with you, when it's completely out of our hands, that worries me. Mayor Fred Eisenberger says this could be the end of the LRT. Without an EA, there's no project. Um, we, we do have a decent public transportation system and the HSR is running great. Uh, in the future they can certainly make it greener by uh, adding the electric uh, buses, maybe the double-decker buses if, if needed. But it just seems like a shame to spend, a, well, at least a billion dollars just on uh, some rails, some, um, some streetcars basically. You're not sold on it to begin with, so but even if you were sold on it, you think it's on the wrong street? Well, anyway. I think it's on the wrong street. There's no question. Well, I would have to say that respectfully, he scathed the question because the reality is our council has voted on this over 50 times. Uh, we all want what's best for Hamilton. However, it has created such a uh, a divided community. Over 200 people gathered at City Hall today to rally and show support for the light rail transit project in Hamilton. Because of the stuff that's going on with the LRT and that they were thinking of putting it to a stop I was hearing, I thought, I thought that I, need to, like, I needed to do something. Uh, one of those reasons is, of course, that we have this really aging infrastructure under King Street, and uh, $800 million of that billion dollars is going to go towards improving the sewers and the power lines and all those sorts of things that exist and the road surface itself. Hello, my name's Michael Nabert. And today, I will be your conductor through some of the great Hamilton LRT debate. How, how much is the operating cost going to be? How much is the maintenance? How much, um, basically, sheer fact, are you giving us a breakdown of, of the costs for all of these aspects of, what about expropriation? How much is that going to cost? <laughs> The business that we have currently is called Gilbert's Big and Tall Men's Shop. It's been in Hamilton since 1954. My in-laws um, established it. Originally, they came from Yugoslavia. My father-in-law is um, a tailor, was a tailor by trade. I know people might think that I, um, living, me living in Winona, why should I care about LRT? Well, I say that it isn't just about me, it's about all of people living in Hamilton. I think that the LRT is a good thing because we need to think of the future generation of people living in Hamilton and the city of Hamilton because if we don't act now then the future could be in danger because of time wise. Um, because of with all the pollution we already have in the air, we cannot keep adding more. Proponents of the LRT, yes, they're, they're saying this is for the millennials, this is for the young people, but in actual fact they won't be able to afford it. 
Uh, their taxes will increase. We know that for a fact. We've seen it already happen in um, Waterloo. It's going to be 11% over the next eight years. If we do not go with the LRT, we will still be paying taxes for the LRT in another community or town or city, wherever the, the province goes next and they put, uh, fund another community because that's our taxes going to another city, I mean, uh, community. So would you rather pay for another community or would you rather pay for your own, um, your own t uh, city, uh, Hamilton? Hamilton's Chamber of Commerce tells us that saying no to the LRT will cost the city $2 billion. Our local architects and real estate agents tell us their industry desperately needs this project. Green groups are touting the environmental benefits. Health organizations tell us that better public health comes with LRT. And local unions say, can our city council really be wanting to thumb their nose to 3,000 new local jobs? But this is Hamilton's Brexit, Trump, and climate change moment with a handful of angry voices saying that if all the experts of a bunch of kinds are telling us we should do a thing, we should definitely do the opposite of that thing. Tempers are high and misinformation is rampant. When, and this is the other um, fallacy and uh, misinformation that, that has been uh, promoted, is the fact that uh, it's a done deal that, that apparently 55 votes have actually occurred pertaining to the LRT. <clears throat> but in actual fact, this current plan, uh, the councillors have never ever voted on. This plan has never been finalized or confirmed by the councillors. <laughs> Here it begins. Hamilton has already pledged to proceed in a diligent and conscientious manner in good faith to expedite the construction of this project. If we break our word now, that'll sting our reputation as a city that keeps our promises. Development is already happening downtown because of the promise of LRT. Now we do need to talk about, speaking of sparing numbers, how much it will cost us if we turn down the LRT. And I'm not even talking about paying back the 20 to 60 million dollars that Metrolinx has already spent or committed on our behalf. Now Kitty Corner from City Hall is the small block bounded by Maine, Bay, George and Caroline. Two properties on that small block have gone from paying $56,000 in annual property tax to $900,000 after they were developed. That's not even the entire block, that's just part of a small block. Uh, with respect to economic uplift, which I'm assuming you're talking about, there is no substantiated proof that an LRT generates economic uplift. Uh, look what happened in Buffalo. I mean, it's, it decimated the downtown of Buffalo and <laughs> I mean, they're, they, they're still trying to recover. Hundreds of cities have LRT. The nearest and newest is Kitchener, which is very like Hamilton in population, area, and ridership. They are already bragging that their LRT has sparked a huge urban development boom. They envy Hamilton our 100% funding because they spent $253 million of their own dollars to get LRT. They still think it was worth it. The place we can learn the most from, though, is Brampton. They said no to LRT, and they didn't get to keep the money for something else. They went to the back of the line after spitting in the province's eye and watched their LRT money go to another city. Businesses will close down. They're gonna go bankrupt. They might move. And it's all brushed off like, oh well, you know, new businesses will come. And I know that yesterday there was somebody in from Waterloo and they're talking about how businesses have come back. And I don't think they understand that these small businesses that have come back, it takes three, four, five years for them to grow and to be in a position where they're profitable. So I'd like to know these places in Kitchener, how they're doing a year from now, if it's such a great thing that's going on there. We know of the huge lawsuit going on in Kitchener, which wasn't mentioned in the news whatsoever, by proprietors that have lost money. Uh, we even know of a grocery store that lost over a million dollars a year in sales. Uh, the mitigation aspect, Metrolinx um, continually 
focus us on the fact that they will help out businesses uh, during this difficult time of destruction and con construction, etc. And um, but but to be honest with you, true mitigation would be no taxes or reduced taxes, and um, you know and financial assistance. But uh, we've spoken to many businesses in Kitchener Waterloo area, and there's been absolutely no mitigation whatsoever. It's going it's going to cause disruption to traffic and local businesses during construction. That's a big 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 problem that I've been hearing, um, and I do and I do totally understand that, but. If we don't deal with it, I feel like that people are going to think that we're not trying. And I don't want people to think that Hamilton's a city that doesn't care about the environment because I don't because that reflects on the people. Because you hear that the people are protesting about it and that they don't want it. But then those people that are protesting or that are, don't believe in it are, may, could be the ones that are in support of climate change. So it doesn't make sense. I mean, you're in support of climate change, but you're not in support of LRT. But LOT is helping the environment, so I don't understand that. So as far as the technology for the LRT, which uh, again the proponents speak to as, as being environmentally friendly, etc., uh, the new buses that are developed now have the exact same technology as the LRT. They're emission free, they're electric, they have uh, a signal um, uh, change um, technology that, that makes for a, a more efficient and effective uh, ride. At least Brampton invested in improving their bus transit service, which is why ridership per capita in Brampton has doubled while ridership in Hamilton has gone down under 25 years of steadily shrinking inflation-adjusted HSR budgets. Fares have gone up, service has gone down. Council in Hamilton just recently voted not to finally improve service as they promised to under their own 10-year transit plan. Is Hamilton Council's plan really nothing but more urban sprawl? Do they want to send a message that people who don't own cars just aren't welcome here? In the next four years to 2021, Hamilton's population is expected to go up by 50,000 people. Do we want them in their cars competing for space on the same streets? Or do we want to give some of them a better option? Whoa. We're not building the city for us, we're building the city for the Matthews of this world. We know that our city is going to have potentially 200,000 more people in by 2041 or thereabouts based on the provincial projections. That's a lot of vehicle activity and a lot of movement of people in our community. One of the other concerns with the LRT is the fact that the stops, the LRT stops, will be between four and 800 meters apart. So currently, uh, the B line is, um, is, the stops are much closer than that, and uh, the LRT will actually eliminate 34 bus, bus stops. So if you can imagine um, an elderly person, a, mother, a young mother with children, a disabled person, uh, trying to uh, navigate in the winter or, or in clement weather. The LRT is not really faster than bus. The time-saving speed presented is attained by removing many stops, about four and a half minutes. Who in their right mind would choose a main artery in a, a city and um, that, that doesn't make sense, it doesn't have the room? And I looked at my neighborhood, I thought to myself, well, what about the trees? So in the second uh, uh, PIC, I, that's when I asked specifically about that. And, uh, the friendly man from Metro Metrolink simply said, well, they'd all have to be cut down. And I thought, that's crazy. And I know that by creating LRT, it is using fuel, like not to run it, but like to build it. But using fuel one time and not every day with a car and with buses is much better because you see at East Cape Square where they, that loop where they do the buses, they're idling and that's gas going into the air because they idle like for five minutes, 10 minutes, and they go into East Cape, oh yeah, I'm taking a drink while my bus is out there putting gas into the air, but I don't care. But I do, because in my future, am I gonna have a, am I, like, am I gonna be safe to go outside where I can breathe in polluted gas? Can we please put the operating cost scare tactic to bed just for now? 
City staff and Metrolinx will negotiate an operating agreement next year once a winning bid has been selected for the RFP, and Council will have a chance to vote on the agreement at that time. There is no credible good faith reason today for making the operating cost a reason not to improve the environmental project report. Nobody wants to lose a billion dollars. I mean, anybody in their right mind would be crazy to. But point being, the fact that it's a flawed plan, it's the wrong plan, it was done incorrectly, it was um, done without final confirmation of um, the councillors, uh, plus the fact it's just, it's just not right for Hamilton. And I don't believe that the province will leave us out in the cold. The $1 billion that is committed to Hamilton at this moment will go to another Ontario community. That was uh, made clear to me by the Minister of Transportation. At the corner of Bay Street, where we're hoping for an LRT stop, no plan is perfect and there are valid questions. Some worry gentrification will drive people in the core out of the core, and that'll rely on our City Council to ensure that new development has a certain number of affordable housing units inside. But will we let the perfect be the enemy of the good? Is there a good reason to throw away a billion dollar investment? Will Hamilton refuse as a gift something that other cities are happy to spend their own money to build? We have got to be smarter than that. World-class cities have higher order transit. Let's make Hamilton one of them.